Today, as I said, I'm going to be doing a highly requested video about sensitive skin. Hi guys, I hope you're all well. Welcome to Skin Masterclass. I'm Chida Mulemas, your personal skincare coach. If you're new to my channel, well, where have you been? Press that subscribe button so you can be updated on skincare education, wellness videos every single week. And if you also would like to follow me and my skincare journey, my skincare tips on Instagram, you can follow me on Skin Masterclass as well and say hello. So we're going to be covering what is sensitive skin and I am going to be testing you if you know your skincare game good. Well, essentially, if you know your skin very good because I tell you, lots of people, I have 70% of my clients say, gee, I'm really sensitive. And then in the end, they figure out that actually they're not really sensitive. They think they're sensitive, but they're sensitized. So I'm going to be talking to you the difference between sensitive skin and sensitized skin. And then we're going to be talking about the very, I'll say like probably the buzzword of the season, which is like skin barrier, right? Like soon as it's winter, we hear like lots of uh, products coming out with improving your skin barrier, protecting your skin barrier, enhancing your skin barrier, everything to do with boosting your skin barrier. So we're going to be talking about what is the skin barrier, how we can repair it, and also what are the ingredients that you should be looking in your skincare products if you want to essentially shop for your sensitive or sensitized skin. So if this is something that would be interesting to you, and if you like videos like this, again, press that subscribe button. In order to identify if your skin is sensitive or sensitized, there's one way to do it really very quickly. So essentially, you get the palms of your hands, you touch your cheeks, okay? Then you touch the rest of your face. If your cheeks are slightly warmer, or maybe in some circumstances it's even very warmer, considering to the rest of your face, uh, sensitivity arising on the surface of the skin, which it is essentially a permanent redness and a permanent warmth on your cheek area, considering for the rest of the skin, that means you are sensitive. So you will automatically fall under the category of sensitive skin. And this would essentially mean that you have to find products that are essentially says products especially exclusively designed for hypersensitive skin or sensitive skin. So it also depends on how often do you get red and how, how often do you get heated. If it's permanent, so that would essentially mean uh, most of the day, and if you don't moisturize, it will get really irritated, it will get very itchy, it will get very rough and almost very irritable to touch. That would essentially put you down as a hypersensitive category. So that would essentially mean that you could only use products that would be developed to, for very extremely dry and sensitive skin. Most of the people, I'll say 90% of the people that I see in my, as my clients are not sensitive skin. They think they are sensitive skin, but they are sensitized skin. So what does this mean? If you get temperature redness so it might be um, any external factors would be a great contributing factor this so extreme harsh winter conditions such as like cold dry cold uh, low temperatures even high temperature sun exposure external factors can have a really high contributing factor to your skin that would essentially mean that your skin is sensitized so that is different because that essentially means that your skin barrier needs to be repaired but then also your skin barrier needs to be protected and your skin barrier needs to be strengthened during these times so you are protected against these external factors and you don't get so much effect of it so this doesn't necessarily mean that sensitive skin does not need to use products that would be good for skin barrier repair or skin barrier protection by all no means, that's the main skin need for sensitive skin as well. But if you are sensitized especially, these are the main contributing factors that you should be looking when you are looking to buy skincare products. So it, essentially the skin needs are to repair skin, repair skin barrier, strengthen skin barrier, and also protect skin barrier. So these are like the main skin needs. So when you are going on Cult Beauty, on Sephora, I don't know, any online portal where you are buying your online products, or essentially if I'm producing something for you, personalized for you according to your skin needs, I will ensure that the ingredients would be suited for your skin and combine ingredients that would be suitable for your skin needs in order to repair and protect your skin barrier. So you are essentially looking for these key skin need terms. Okay, so now this is the difference between sensitized skin and sensitive skin. Again, there are lots of like 
cross correlation between the both. So sensitized skin, or okay, uh, so such as sensitive skin can always feel the feeling of itching and stinging, whereas sensitized skin means that there are some cosmetic products or ingredients that would make you react this way. So it might be vitamin C, it might be retinol, it might be high concentration of acid, it might even be oil to some people make it feel itchy or stinging. So again, this is the difference between sensitized and sensitive. Sensitive generally almost always feel this feeling whereas sensitized it's it, it, again like using skincare is part of an external effect you're applying something on your skin and your skin is reacting to it so that's why it's a reactive skin this is important reactive skin that means it's sensitized versus if it's always permanently red always permanently itchy always permanently irritable you have sensitive skin which is fine don't worry i got you covered and uh, you also might have some allergies so your sensitivity might be also triggered by an allergy i also have some clients that who are specifically um allergic towards aloe vera you think aloe vera is actually a calming ingredient which it is most of the cases but two to three percent of the population could also have some sensitivity towards aloe vera uh, you might have sensitivity towards tea tree or salicylic acid or retinol so all of these could uh, make you feel uh, sensitive or you might have an allergy so there are some people that who have allergies uh, to wool's nuts oils or seed oils right so now that we've actually identified the difference and please what i want you to do now is comment below and say are you sensitive skin or are you sensitized skin and share this video also with your sensitive or sensitized skin friends and families now we're going to be talking about the skin barrier right i should actually be sitting here on the couch and talking to you but i always prefer sitting on the floor who's like that right below if you always like find much more comfort on sitting on the floor um crossing your legs and just grabbing onto a drink it was i did have coffee now i've got a big glass of water the size of my face essentially <laughs> keep hydrated guys this is key for sensitive skin keep hydrated right mm. not only for sensitive skin by the way every skin needs moisture <laughs> Anyway, where were we? So, what is skin barrier? Our skin barrier, and I'm sorry if I'm like looking back and forward because I have my notes here, right? Our skin barrier is part of the top layer of our skin, which is essentially the stratum corneum. This is like the um, scientific term that we call the top part of the skin. It is made out of skin cells and it's also made out of lipids, which essentially glues everything together. So the lipid interface itself is made out of uh, fatty acids, cholesterol, and also ceramides. So you probably heard the word ceramides uh, coming up in a lot of skincare ingredient at the moment, because ceramides is essentially the building block for a healthy skin. Um, and when I'm always formulating, I ensure using peptides and ceramides in the formula as well. And you have to essentially, I'll talk about this more in the future when I'm talking about the ingredients itself, in, in a short while but you have to make sure that there are lots of different kinds of ceramides it's always better to have a combination of ceramides because each ceramide would work differently and it will each ceramide would work on the different layers of the skin as well so if you want to have more of a broad um, understanding on this i would definitely do you more uh, a detailed video of ceramides itself but just know that the more uh, just just know that uh, essentially ceramides is very good for repairing the skin barrier and also protecting the skin barrier and it also holds moisture and it also holds uh, that strength of the skin obviously our skin naturally exfoliates so we can actually speed up this natural exfoliation process but our skin essentially always repairs itself because don't forget our skin is the biggest organ if there's damage in any part of the body the body repair function kicks in so essentially the skin is there to protect us but also it repairs itself on its own so you have this natural exfoliation process but what we can do as consumers we can catalyze that reaction by using ingredients such as ceramides or hyaluronate acid or peptides i'll talk about the ingredients again uh, to sp essentially speed up and heal the skin and also provide a good environment for the skin to heal and repair itself as well. So what happens if your skin barrier is damaged? What happens is that the external irritants, so it can be allergens essentially, that's why you would see that with acne prone skin is also it's damaged skin because there's obviously bacteria and you have allergens as well that who could be possible irritable on your skin. So allergens, external irritants can get easily into the skin 
and also this is compromised with a lot of water leaving the skin so moisture leaving your skin is considerably higher if you have a damaged skin barrier it could make you more acne prone it could make you more sensitive more red and these are all indications that you have a damaged skin barrier so let me know if you do feel like you are ticking any of these boxes and if you do feel like you have a damaged skin barrier by the way i would like to stress out again that just because you're not experiencing these kind of effects doesn't necessarily mean that you should avoid using ceramides or peptides or hyaluronic acid for example because these ingredients are still very good as a protective re regime so when a client comes and sees me and they have a perfectly healthy skin barrier i still make sure to ensure that these ingredients are maybe not their most dominant ingredient that they are using but definitely included in their ingredient list that they are using as part of their skincare routine because we always have to have a protective approach as well when it comes to skincare not so much of a reactive approach but also a protective approach this is exactly the same thing when it comes to external aging you don't have to wait until you know you are older and you see like fine wrinkles or deep wrinkles appearing to start using firming ingredients you can start boosting the collagen production of the skin before it actually gets that way the whole reason why we use SPF is not to repair the skin but it's also to protect the skin and SPF is essentially the most important product that we should be using as part of our daycare routine because it's a protective skincare product and SPF is the one one of the most important ones so always keep in mind don't be so much on like the repairing mode yes that's important but protecting and using ingredients to protect the skin barrier protect your skin from from a external aging or protect the skin from getting acne for example these ingredients these protective ingredients are very very important and you should be considerate of using them so these are the main factors of why we can experience skin barrier uh, damage of course it's not limited to these but these are the main contributing factors I don't I don't want to bore you with all the details I am going to maybe should I make a separate video explaining them all probably that will be better but just to give you the headline so overwashing uh, over exfoliating and using a lot of active ingredients that is not suitable for your skin my friends this is definitely uh, one of the reasons why we can get damaged skin barrier um, over exfoliating so that's physical exfoliation and using the wrong physical exfoliation as well right so these whole uh, you definitely heard of uh, the scent ives apricot scrub why like the, not the apricot yeah the scent ives apricot walnut scrub it's like been the worst hated product I think of all times. Uh, well, the reason why is obviously it's got, uh, it's not micro, uh, micro exfoliants is actually quite macro and it's not regular. That's the reason why um, I don't, I, I really do like physical scrubs, but that specific scrub, it's actually condemned quite bad. I'll go into the details of that in my future videos. Um, yeah, so that could be, uh, yeah, so definitely overly physically exfoliating, but also chemically exfoliating as well. And using, I'll say, um, high concentrations of chemical exfoliants, very, either very regularly, so you'll maybe using it day and night and it's very high concentration, or you don't repair your skin and you don't use products and ingredients that would be essentially more on the protective region after you exfoliate as well. After you exfoliate, you have to use the correct ingredients to repair the skin, okay? Pollution, uh, bad, dry air quality, as I said, external factors, weather, stress, lack of sleep, these can also have a contributing factor, hormones, genes, so again, aging can have also a contributing factor as well because as we age, the number of ceramides that we have on our skin reduces and also our hydration, our moisture levels drop and also our collagen synthesis is quite slow. So all of these start to decline unfortunately with aging. So these can also have a major contributing factor of how fast your skin repairs and how well your skin repairs as well. Now let's talk about the skin barrier repairing ingredients. So this is the ingredients to actually restore back your skin barrier and also to make your skin healthy again. So ceramides, as, as I said to you, ceramides is extremely important uh, and any product that contains ceramides, like any brand that uses ceramides, they'll always make sure that they'll mention it because it's again a buzzword and people like to put buzzwords in your face 
I'm joking. But seriously, we will hear so much about ceramides over the next but over the next couple of years as well. Fatty acids essentially is omega-3 fatty acids, omega-6 fatty acids, seven and nine. So depending on your skin type, if you're more of a person that who have acne prone skin, using omega-3 and omega more omega-3, but also omega-6 fatty acids oils are going to be good to restore your skin. And if you have extremely dry skin, then uh, fatty acids uh, with omega-7 and 9 fatty acids are going to be very good and a lifesaver for your skin as well. So we said ceramides, we said free fatty acids, natural moisturizing factors, so natural moisturizing factors, there's actually so many. There's NNF, uh, there's also saccharide isomerates, which I really like using in my products, saccharide isomerase. It's very good to keep hydration in the products and also gives that kind of strength to the skin. Another good one is niacinamide, vitamin D3. I'll say niacinamide at high concentrations should be avoided if you have quite a damaged skin barrier. I would say concentrations between two to four percent is a very good optimal concentration to have. So those are the ingredients to repair the skin barrier. Then you also want to retain moisture. So retaining moisture, these are the top ingredients. So hyaluronic acid and sodium hyaluronate. So there are a derivative of each other, but you will see in some brands uh, say that, for example, there are different kinds and different molecular weights of hyaluronic acid. And you will see them, uh, uh, and rather than just writing down one hyaluronic acid, you'll have different combinations of them. And this essentially is good because diff having different molecular weights, hyaluronic acid and sodium hyaluronate essentially, the lower molecular weight will be easily able to penetrate to the skin to retain more moisture, whereas the higher molecular weight would essentially act more of a uh, protective on top of the surface of the skin. So it's good to have a combination of both. Then you have glycerin and then you have urea. Okay, so we said glycerin and urea, these are all good moisturizing factors. And of course you have the butylene glycol, propylene glycol, glycerol extract. These are all water retaining ingredients that we also use in skincare. And then uh, a very good one actually, um, one that we see a lot is Pantanol. Pantanol is vitamin B5, that restores keratin and protein to the skin as well. And uh, vitamin E, like using antioxidants, is very important as well. So vitamin E is a very good antioxidant that helps uh, for damaged and chapped skin. And also um, you'll see vitamin E in a lot of products that are eczema prone. If you are eczema prone, you'll see vitamin E is included in those products. And now let's talk about the skin smoothing ingredients. Skin smoothing ingredients could be uh, ingredients such as aloe vera. Again, aloe vera is very good at calming and healing ingredients. Another good one would be calendula, marigold. Uh, marigold is the same as can calendulas in some countries and some brands use different names. Another good one is Santella, Cantella Acetatica. Uh, that's a green herb. I formulate a lot with Cantella Acetatica. I have a really good supply here in Malaysia that is able to supply me the best quality and I create uh, infusions, I create extracts. Uh, I use the oil as well, so it's a very good uh, skin smoothing and anti-inflammatory ingredient. Another good one that you have to use is anti-inflammatory products. So anti-inflammatory means in anything essentially red on your skin means there's an inflammation on your skin. So using anti-inflammatory ingredients would essentially help with reducing the redness. So green tea extract and green tea essentially is very good. Um, the kombucha, we started to see a lot of kombucha rising as well. Uh, probiotics and prebiotics are on the rise as well. And then chamomile, using chamomile infusion, chamomile extract, chamomile oil. Again, lavender, lavender infusion, lavender extract. These are nice, calming and skin smoothing uh, ingredients. So that was in a nutshell. Um, there's always more to learn and more to share. Uh, please do not forget to subscribe for weekly skincare education videos. And also I'm gonna start doing more vlogs as well, seeing that I have a lot of uh, things to share with you. Maybe not.
please do let me know what other content you would want me to film. As I said, the concentrations matter, what ingredients you, you pair with matters, consistency and how you use it matters. So if you want help in identifying which ingredients is suitable for your skin type and your skin needs and also create your skincare routine from scratch that is personally produced and created for you, then uh, I'm going to leave that link below. All you need to do is just fill the uh, fill the form and I'll get back to you within 24 hours to arrange your one-to-one -one Zoom session. Okay guys, it was lovely speaking to you and have a lovely day. Take care of yourself. Bye.